Okay, so the Raspberry Pi 5 has had quite a major EEPROM update. So the latest version is uh, 17th of April, and this version has something really clever about it. Now I need to turn it off first of all. So I've got no storage in this at the moment, and you can see this is what normally happens with the Raspberry Pi 5. But if I switch off, wait a few seconds, and then switch it on again, and while we're waiting for it to boot up, you can see my new mouse and keyboard. I've gone for a, a single dongle, but for the mouse and keyboard, and this is like a, I think it's a 60% one. I've just realized it hasn't got cursor keys, and I'm not sure if that's going to annoy me or not, um, but I can always use my Logitech one, uh, but you can toggle through various different colors and things like that. It feels really solid, and uh, yeah, I'm happy with it so far, but time will obviously tell if it's a decent one or not. So this is the new update. And you can see here, install an OS on this Raspberry Pi. So we didn't have this on Pi 5 before. So what I'm going to do is shut it down again and plug an NVMe drive on it. So I've got to make a disk. This is a 256 NVMe drive. I've erased it so there is no operating system on it. Because obviously if you have an operating system on it, it's going to try and boot from that. So let's secure that in place with my little tab and switch on and see if it detects it. Okay, so it's trying the NVMe drive. Now it says there's no operating system. So press and hold shift. Waiting for network. And because I've got a ethernet connection plugged in, it's actually installing just the Raspberry Pi imager to the Pi in the RAM. So it's not using the available storage. It's using RAM for this bit. So now what we can do is just check that the storage is there. So choose storage. Yeah, so it, it picks up my NVMe drive. So if you've got a blank NVMe drive, effectively you can boot up your Pi if it's got the latest EEPROM update and it will boot into this menu. So I'm gonna select that drive. I'm gonna select an operating system. What have we got in here? Uh, let's go with Ubuntu. And what's the smallest one we've got? Oh, actually I need to tell it it's a Raspberry Pi 5 first of all. So let's close that down, choose device and Raspberry Pi 5. So this will only show us operating systems for Raspberry Pi 5. So let's go for other general purpose and Ubuntu. And we've got Ubuntu server, which is smaller, 1.1 gig. So let's do that. So you can see it's picked my storage, hit next. And this bit would be the way that you would apply any settings. If you wanted to start up and connect to your Wi-Fi network, you could put your Wi-Fi settings in here. You can also do remote access settings as well, but I'm not going to bother. I've done that in a separate video. So I'm going to say no and say yes. So this would just be a clean install of the operating system onto that NVMe drive. Now Raspberry Pi Imager also gives you the option to be able to erase your storage. So this is really great if your operating system fails and you've got it backed up. You should be able to erase that drive with this tool and then write another operating system to it. Or if you regularly switch between operating systems and you don't have many storage devices, this is a good way of doing it. So it stops and starts, so it's obviously downloading chunks. So it's verifying super quick because it's a fast drive. And it's booting up now. And we have a login. I'm going to take a guess that the login is Ubuntu and Ubuntu. But let's see what happens. Oh, there you go. You're required to change your password immediately. Change your password. Right, okay. So I can, so current password is Ubuntu. New password. And let's pop that in again. There we go. Now this version of Ubuntu doesn't come with a desktop interface, but you can install Recall Box for multi-game emulators, uh, Ubuntu with a desktop, Raspberry Pi OS, all sorts of things in here. So let's shut this down and I'll boot up in KDE Plasma to show you what else has changed. So this is the EEPROM update. Uh, so we go to releases, all the information is in here, and this is a pretty major update. So dated 17th of April, uh, interesting changes since the last release. So the network install I've covered. We also have overclocking over three gigahertz now. 
So I'll open that one up. It's also an interesting one here uh, about the differences between the four gig and eight gig Raspberry Pi. And I'll show you some benchmarks, but it looks like it has been sorted out from this. So let's have a look first of all at the overclock. So there's a thread on here uh, about overclocking and some people have gone, uh, well, Jeff Gearling did a video and he went to 3.14, um, but also I think 3.2 or 3.175 was the highest overclock. Although from a lot of the things that are being said, it doesn't seem to make that much difference. When you go past a certain level, because it reaches a certain voltage, it doesn't really go beyond that. So it doesn't look like we're going to get much beyond 3 gigahertz, which is still great. I mean, if you can manage to get three gigahertz from your 2.4 gigahertz Pi, that's really good. Uh, some overclock better than others, so your mileage may vary. Uh, but if we have a look at this one, this has some benchmarks from before the changes were done to the EEPROM. And the four gig Raspberry Pi 5 was clocking higher uh, at all clock speeds than the eight gig. Uh, in this instance, I mean, obviously it may be that their Pi 4 was better at overclocking, but it seems to be pretty consistent from what people are saying in here. Uh, and there's loads of information if you want to go through it, but essentially four gig pies were benchmarking quite considerably faster. You can see here at 2.8 gigahertz, it was 38% faster. So that's been addressed. And if you want to go through it, all the details are in there. But yeah, great update, really pleased with it. Really like the fact that they've added that installer. That's a really good feature. And I did use that on Raspberry Pi 4. And it especially is good for people who haven't got other computers they can use. And a little update on the keyboard and the mouse. Uh, it's a really nice combo, really like it. I'll put a link in the description, but the only thing for me is there are no cursor keys. Um, so basically, uh, if you want to use cursors, you've got to press function and W, and then these become the cursors. But that means then if you're in the terminal and you want to type, and it's any of these letters, you have to switch it back by pressing function and W. Now, I guess some people don't use the cursors very much. I use the cursors a lot in various different operating systems. So yeah, reluctantly, I'm gonna send this back, but I, I really liked it. Uh, I think it looks great. It feels really nice to use. Uh, it's got all these different color variations and things on here. So you can switch between. It's just a really nice keyboard, but no good for me. And the mouse felt really nice as well. So yeah, really disappointed with that, but I'll find something else. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.